I'm Craig Matheson, the Chief Operating Officer with Newfound Gold out here at the uh, recently excavated Keats Trench. And today we're looking at a piece of geology that is something that we've seen in drill core, which is a multi-phase vein. And you can see here right below me, you've got four very distinct periods of hydrothermal fluids coming through this vein system. And each one of these we can tell has slightly different character to it, a little slightly different mineralogy to it. The lowest one is actually a very laminated vein. It's got a lot of stylolites in it, and it's actually carrying a lot of ammonia in the system. So we can see these ammonia micas that are cutting in through here. It's a very bright green color, but it's also carrying a lot of visible gold. And all of these vein phases are actually quite high grade. They're all mineralized, and they're all carrying visible gold content. This middle one is actually brecciated. This is a more massive phase, although it does show some signs of, of lamination within it. And then we've got a larger Brescia phase, and the, and the larger Brescia wall rock is likely due to some pre-existing faulting that came in along this fracture that's now opened up into a larger vein. And then beyond the actual vein proper, we've got several meters here, um, up, to, up to 10 to 12 meters of uh, what we would consider a stock work. And that, that stock works, you know, really indicative by, you know, the multiple orientations of veining. And you're seeing a lot of wall rock sulfidation that comes in with that stock work. Up here, you can see in the middle vein that we've got a lot more sulfide content. In particular, it's got a lot of belangerite, it's got a lot of arsenopyrite. And we're not seeing that in the other phases of the vein. So it's quite interesting to see this in the ground and something that we, we had noted previously. Keats main vein, quite a large, massive vein. It does have brecciated phases. It does have uh, some laminated phases, although we do see here on part of the wall that's in front of me, you see very distinct slick side surfaces along these vein salvages, and that is one of the features that is very difficult to see in drill core. And it tells us about the kinematics and the dextral movement along this vein, at least at this time when it was being emplaced. It's going to aid us in future uh, exploration because we can understand potentially some of the movement on these veins as they're forming. This vein's quite massive. I mean, it's, it's up to two to three meters in, in width and in, in total width. So here's a, a great example of the uh, slick inside surfaces that we see along the veins. And you can see the, the movement here is, is relatively shallow. And uh, more broadly, we can see that it's a, it's a dextral type movement. And a lot of times we'll actually see a thin film of sulfide mineralization that forms uh, along those slickens. This is actually a region that sits in the hanging wall portion of the Keats Baseline Fault. And I'm looking at an area here which is, is, is a very broad quartz stockwork. The stockwork, what we're learning now and, and what's helping us understand these in, in the trench is it's actually the intersection of two relatively minor structures. And what's, what's happening at this location is it's forming a, a very broad pipe of stockwork mineralization. We don't have any assay data on this, so I can't comment on uh, what, what kind of grade we're gonna expect out of this, but it's got a lot of arsenopyrite within the wall rock that surrounds the veins. So we do expect to see some sort of gold mineralization with this. The interesting part about vein areas like this and, and these intersections that we're finding in the trench is that they're very underrepresented in our drilling and in our models. So as we look at things like areas that we hadn't previously recognized through drilling alone and, and has really been a, a huge benefit to be looking at in the Keats Trench. <laughs>